Good afternoon. I'm here. I'm Chris Roberts. We're on the Long Road Show. We're here with Linda Rubin. We're here to talk about something that's extremely important, 2020 in the Healthy Community Initiative that Cheshire Medical Center has put on, Cheshire Medical Center Keene has put on. Welcome. Thank you. Nice to be here. And um, <clears throat> can you tell us what 2020 means? What's the goal of 2020? Yes. Um, well, the goal of 2020 is for Cheshire County to be the healthiest community in the nation by 2020. And the way we're going to get there is by engaging the community in that initiative. Um, and so we have a, a coalition that's been working on it since 2006 when uh, Cheshire Medical Center took it on. Uh, so that, that um, coalition is called the Council for a Healthier Community, and they're involved in all of the strategic planning and the action planning around the initiative. But it's really going to be the community, you know, taking ownership of the initiative if we're, if we're going to get there. And <clears throat> I've heard it when, I, when the city council, you gave a presentation at mm -hmm. the city council. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us some of the, the major sponsors, the major driving forces, communities and um, activities, organizations? that are involved in the yes. initiative, yep. Well, the Council for a Healthier Community, um, is. there's probably about 25 community organizations that are represented on that council. So everybody from Monadnock Developmental Services to Southwestern Community Services. Um, we also have a Vision 2020 steering team with some of the larger uh, corporations involved. So we've got Markham and CNS. And so quite um, a heavy hitter list of, of players that are all seeing the costs that um, you know, our unhealthy behaviors are having on things like, you know, medical costs, uh, health insurance costs. And uh, people, you know, the, the time is really ripe for people to come together and put some, um, put some good thinking on, you know, what can we do as a community to turn things around. And it's, <clears throat> you're talking about the different companies, but it's more than just costs. It's totally about the quality of life. People are living longer. I don't see any benefit of living 30 years longer if I can't do anything. I have a just depressing quality of life. Absolutely. And I think what's, what's a little scary to think about is we've been watching over the last probably 20 or 30 years that um, our lifespans have been increasing. Now the CDC and the um, American Medical Association, they're talking about for the first time our children, this next generation of, of children, their lifespans are going to be shorter. Um, so it's not just about quality of life, it's also about we're actually going to see our lifespans shrinking because of the effects of the unhealthy behaviors. And when you're talking one of the goals of 2020 is also personal personal accountability. Absolutely. Because we've been watching TV, you can't, every single day you're bombarded by, if you have this problem, take this drug, take this drug, your hips don't work, we'll give you a new hip, your knees don't hurt. So we've been telling people for maybe the past 10, 15 years, it doesn't matter what type of lifestyle that you do, medicine will fix it. Exactly, exactly. And we know that um, of the factors that affect our health, about 10% of those can be directly related back to medical care. But we put 88% of the, the <coughs> money um, towards medical care. Meanwhile, of the factors that affect our health, 50% of those are related to healthy lifestyle behaviors. And we're putting less than 4% of our medical dollars towards prevention and supporting people in adopting healthier behaviors that really would, would make the big difference. If you look at the top causes of death in, in the United States, number one is tobacco, 435,000 deaths per year from tobacco. Uh, second leading cause, 365,000 deaths per year, is due to directly to physical inactivity and uh, poor, poor nutrition. Uh, so if we could, you know, if Vision 2020 could focus on uh, those three, uh, we'd be addressing the majority of causes of death in, in this country. So <clears throat> it's kind of like, kind of like Forrest Gump, it, get off your butt, watch what you eat, and don't smoke. Yeah, if you want to really <laughs> simplify it that way, that's that's pretty much it. Now, you know, obviously it's a it's little more, more complicated, that, yeah. um, you know, with, with tobacco, uh, certainly you, you don't ever want to start because once you do, then you're really talking about a nicotine addiction. And anybody that knows anything about addiction knows that it is not easy to overcome. So 
again, we really want to focus some of those dollars on prevention. And while organizations like Cheshire Medical Center certainly does a lot in the area of tobacco prevention, um, when you look at the dollars nationally put into prevention, it's still a pretty small percentage compared to what we're putting into actual medical care for people after they get sick. Um, the, the poor nutrition and, and physical inactivity, those are probably a lot easier you know, to, to deal with. Um, and I think the more we can make good nutrition and physical activity the easier choice for people, the less costly a cho choice, the safer choice, the more fun choice, the more success we're going to have. We're going to, we'll talk about obesity. Obesity is the big giant, the big gorilla, no pun intended, in, in the room. Mm -hmm. But before I, I was reading an article in the Wall Street Journal, it was saying that obesity costs the average woman about $6,000 a year mm -hmm. in lost wages, lost promotion opportunities. It costs the male about two to $4,000 a year. Over a 50-year working life, that's you're saying, wait a minute, so a woman could lose three, an obese woman could lose almost $300,000 over a lifetime, a man about 200. That's an awful lot of money when you look at it that way. Mm -hmm. That's just a cost out of your own pocket, not your medical and all this other stuff. Absolutely, and when you, when you extrapolate that <coughs> to uh, you know, the, the whole population, I mean, the CDC has a figure out that, um, that the, the uh, diseases that result from physical inactivity and poor nutrition are costing the taxpayers of this country $40 billion. Um, that's, you know, that's, that's staggering. And of course, that has nothing to do with things like, you know, what 10-year-old wants to lose their mom to a heart attack at age 55, you know? I mean, so, you know, you can look at dollars and medical care, but then you can look at you know, the, the, the quality of life issues and people dying prematurely and not being there for their kids, for their grandkids uh, to support their families. When you, you just talked about someone losing their mom at, at 55, <clears throat> I'd probably be in the wrong place saying it because this is October and Breast Awareness and Breast Cancer Month. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the number of women who die from breast cancer, that's nothing compared to the women who die of heart disease and stroke and heart-related um, Absolutely. Conditions. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said, the, the, the evil triad is, is tobacco and the diseases that, that come from um, physical inactivity and poor nutrition. So your cardiovascular diseases, your invasive cancers, um, that's what's, that's what's killing us, and that's what we, we really have to be looking at, is what's the underlying causes of those uh, top killers. They are directly related to our nutrition and our, our activity. Uh, but, you know, we're not going to turn everybody no, no. into fitness nuts. No. You know, um, we've got statistics that show that um, as far back as the early 80s, uh, when they started measuring it pretty intensely, 20% of the population are what they consider to be the physically active. So they are the people that are joining the gyms, that are getting out there and doing big, long bike rides and, um, you know, really being uh, highly physically active. Um, what about the rest of us? You know, 80% of the population, you know, since the 80s, they're showing it's been 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%. It's not changing. So you could infer from that that it's probably not going to change. We're not going to get 80% of the population to, be, to join that other 20%. Um, so we have to, again, look at how do we increase physical activity, for example, by making it the easier choice. Uh, for example, less than or more than 20% of our, um, our errands are less than a mile from our homes. Um, everybody could walk, you know, if the roads are safe, you know, if there's good lighting, there's sidewalks, you know, if, if it's safe to walk, you could certainly do errands if it's less than a mile from your home. More than 40% of our errands are less than two miles from our home. So public transportation, and even that's going to increase our activity. You know, people might say, well, taking a bus, how does that increase? Well, well, you got to get to the bus stop. 
Uh, so you got to walk to the bus stop, right? You got to walk back from the bus stop. Um, so even uh, public transportation, increasing that, would increase our physical activity, and nobody's going to be worse for the wear for it. They're not even going to know. You know, you go to cities, New York, Boston, you know, yep. so, uh, cities across the country, where it's it's very public transit um, uh, friendly, and and you see people biking, walking, all of that. Um, they've made it the easy choice in cities that have done it done it right. And when you make it the easier choice, people will do it. When parking's too hard, yeah. you know, when you can't find parking, when it's too expensive, but you can jump on your bike because there's a, a, a good bike trail and there's bike paths and there's uh, bike racks and, you know, then the, the research shows that we're going we're gonna to take advantage of that. Keene has some good bike trails. Yes. They're going to get the bridge over the highway. You were talking about off the safe ways to, to school. And I'll, I'll confess, <clears throat> a little vain, I saw myself on the, the first show I did about three months ago, and the first thing it says, oh man, I'm fat. And <clears throat> since I, I ride my bike, if I'm going to Hannaford's or Walmart, and even if I go to a school board up to the um, high school, it takes me less than 12 minutes to go from my house and it takes me about 10 to 15 minutes to drive, and it's like now it's just hop on the bike and go, and I can go and get back before most people driving. I had the, almost the same exact experience. Um, I was a runner <clears throat> for years and years, so I was part of that 20%. Uh, but then I was getting some hip pain, getting a little older, turned 50 this past spring. Uh, things aren't you know, working as well as they used to. So I had to stop running, and it was like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna, you know, how am I gonna replace? What, what, you know, initially I was thinking, well, I'll join a gym, I'll, you know, I'll pick up biking, I'll do, you know, something else. But you know what? I'm not as interested in anything else. So I really had to say to myself, okay, if I'm not gonna, if there's not gonna be some new fitness fad that's gonna do it for me, then how am I gonna just slip it into my day? Because the research shows. 10 minutes of moderate physical activity mm. to get start getting your heart rate going, it, it can add up. So if the CDC's recommendations are 150 minutes of moderate mm. um, physical activity a week, which that's what yep. they recommend, and you can get it in 10 minute increments, mm. hmm, all right, yeah. maybe I can, you know. So I got the bike out, dusted it off a little bit, pumped up the tires, you know. And I started riding my bike to work and back. Um, now, I remember doing this when I was a kid. You know, I remember biking to school. I remember walking to school. Um, but I hadn't done anything like that since I was a kid. But you know what? It is quicker, it especially is quicker. When, the, when the construction was happening up on Court Street. And, you know, I had to drive to, uh, up to the medical center. Um, so much easier to get on my bike, go through Wheelock Park, beautiful yep. bike path, you know, trail through uh, Wheelock Park, and um, I could get there in less time than it was than than driving. And so I get my 13 minutes of physical activity in in the morning, at night, maybe go for a walk, you know, after lunch, something like that, and and boom, I've got my 30 minutes for the day, and I didn't have to join a gym or, you know, and I'm not, yeah. I, I'm not saying gyms aren't yeah. great. And, you know, for those people that are inclined, they're, they're wonderful. And I belong to many gyms and, and I would encourage people to try <laughs> gyms. Maybe they'll work for you. But for that 80% yeah. where it's probably not going to be a gym that's going to lead to their healthier life, you know, their healthier behaviors, we got to work it into the, to our everyday living. Because you know, if you look at it, if you go out for just a walk, burn about 300 calories a day, that could be the easy equivalent of 10 to 15 pounds a year. Then if you get rid of a Coke a day, all of a sudden, you know, I can't lose 25 pounds. 300 calories there and one less soda a day, you could be 25 pounds lighter at the end of the year without going to the gym or really making no behavior changes. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you, yeah, simple things. Because that's the other thing is people are not going to do a, a total overhaul overnight. It's going to be small changes. <clears throat> Try that bike to work. Try that errand to the, to the um, drugstore, you know, uh, that's a mile and a half from your house. Give it a try. See how it feels. What were the obstacles that when you got on your bike that you, you know, that, that um, maybe would impede you doing it again, you know? But try some simple things. Um, that's where we got to start. 
Well, I've been asking a lot of the questions. You've got some notes, things you want to make, take care of? Uh, let's see. Well, you know, Vision 2020 is, a, um, is an initiative that's totally driven by data. I talked about the Council mm. for a Healthier Community, and, um, you know, Cheshire Medical Center brought people together in 2006 and, and onward to look at what are some data points that we can measure over the course of the 10, 15 years of the initiative so that we'll know when we actually have gotten there. And that's what this community uh, plan is. Um, so this came out in January of 2010, but it, it was three years in the, the making of figuring out, well, how are we going to measure when we know we get there? So for example, one of the data sets in here is um, adults at a healthy weight. And um, if you look at this book, which is actually available, uh, you can get it online on our Vision 2020 page on the Cheshire Medical Center website, which is just cheshire-med.com. So you have it at a PDF file? So PDF file, yep. Yes. You, can, you can get it right off of the website. Um, and uh, uh, there's 40 indicators in here. So one of them is adults reporting a healthy weight. And when we collected the data, uh, we had 33% of Cheshire County residents at a, of adults at a healthy weight. The folks working on Vision 2020 set the goal of 60%. So by 2020, we want to have 60% of adults at a healthy weight. Now in the country, I think we're at 37%, maybe yeah. New Hampshire's 36, something like that. Um, so, you know, we're, we're somewhat in line with the rest of the country, but 60%, you know, that, that's, that's, that's a big jump. But the point is, we've got a goal. Yep. We, we know what we're, we're working towards. And that's what this data book is about, is, is helping people to know this is, how, this is the, the measurements that we're going to use to determine if we've gotten there or not. And the Council for Healthier Community and a number of other folks on the Vision 2020 steering team that's what they did is figure out what are the data sets out there that we can use and that we can monitor over time to to see if we've we've become the healthiest well one of the data sets you had in here is also the most dis disabling um, data set in the military <clears throat> and people don't catch up on it is dental mm -hmm. and it's it's amazing you, you d we're looking at the full body then we have to do the dental exam, and it's like, sorry, you're ineligible for deployment because your teeth are so bad. Yeah. We can't afford you an abscess teeth, tooth, or whatever. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm really glad that you talked about the dental. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we defined health very broadly with Vision 2020. So you see indicators about not only physical health, there's mental health indicators in there. There's um, an indicator for air quality, the number, the percent, I think it's the number of <laughs> Um, good air quality days um, in Cheshire County because there's so many health-related <coughs> illnesses to, that are directly related to air quality. So um, we, again, very broad definition of health. So all these indicators uh, really fit into that broad definition. And so some other things in here, um, voter registration rate, nonprofit giving rate, um, what else? Uh, percentage of bike paths. Um, so because we interpreted things very, very broadly, we can tackle the issue on all different, all different fronts, and we can take advantage of the amazing community that we have in Cheshire County. Um, you know, nobody collaborates like people in, in Cheshire <laughs> County, and so we can really take advantage of that um, collaborative spirit and get to get the job done because Cheshire Medical Center or the Council for Healthier Community mm. is not going to make this community the healthiest. Healthiest, it's the community mm. that's going to make themselves the healthiest. And because they can align with Vision 2020, you know, we can get the people that are working on climate mm. change, that are interested mm. in the air quality indicator, to do you know that piece to work on initiatives that are going to improve our air quality. And, and make it easier for people, especially people with breathing mm -hmm. problems, to either not have the breathing problems or to be able to do more physical activity because they're breathing cleaner air. Uh, we can align with you know all, all the different organizations out there, folks like um, uh, the Cheshire County Conservation District and the people that are pulling mm -hmm. together the new um, Mananoc Food Co-op and Hannah Grimes. They're all working on issues around uh, safe local uh, food. Um, so. Th 
that's going to be part of the puzzle, but we don't need to create a whole new group around that. There's already three groups out there working on it. So it's just aligning uh, folks in the community that are already doing things with where we want to go with Vision 2020. And that's been a really successful um, strategy. We're going to come up to a quick break, but before we go to the quick break, you brought up clean air. I don't think a lot of people realize how borderline keen is. We got the grant to buy out a bunch of the old wood-burning stoves to help clean, but we're just really on the borderline of failing the EPA, and then would, not only would it have a negative effect on people with asthma, but it would also have a negative financial effect on a lot of our businesses. And so, again, 2020 is bringing that up. You're bringing up issues that are serious issues that most people don't even realize it's an issue. That's right, and I think you find with a lot of the indicators in there, in here, there is a real economic tie to probably the majority of them in here. You know, um, so like you said, the business community is going to be hurt by um, this. Be you know, if we become, if the air quality gets worse and worse. Um, it's going to affect all kinds of different things relating to business. Are you going to be able to attract workers here, bringing in you know good people, if they have to worry about breathing in dirty air? Um, or do you pay extra hundred thousand dollars to have scrubber equipment on your chimneys? Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. So, um, and you know, I think people don't understand too that. Um, I mean, a lot of people do, but many people don't. You know, the Keen is, we're, we're a glacial uh, lake valley. Yep. And uh, so there are some, um, uh, you know, geologic reasons for why the air, the, the air issues are um, just more, you know, are, are more of an issue here. But we've know? had some really serious life-threatening days for some people. Absolutely, absolutely. And so I definitely want to align Vision 2020 with those folks that are working on issues like uh, climate change and, uh, you know, reducing greenhouse gases and, and all of that. It's, it's all part of it. Okay, so we'll go to our public service announcement and we'll come right back. All righty. Here we go. What? What? <laughs> you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Because kids in foster care don't need perfection. They need you. The joke's on us. So the inmate says to the guy next to him, the food was much better here when you were governor. <laughs> hey, did you see the cartoon where the Capitol building is part of an amusement park? <laughs> Classic. Hey, did you hear that DJ talking last week about the congressman? <laughs> they really nailed him. <laughs> yeah, and his family. Yeah. They're all clowns. Well, I don't know about all of them. My congressman does a really good job for our district. Actually, my state senator helped us get a grant last month. Everybody expects something. I don't know, teachers, businessmen, senior citizens, lawyers. Doctors, church groups, families, policemen. Can you imagine your life put under a microscope? Oh, it's okay. But after all, it's, it's been, been the American, American way. way. But still, <laughs> that cartoon was pretty funny, right? <laughs> American democracy. It may seem funny. But, but it's, it's no, no joke. joke. Learn how you can help make American democracy stronger. Log on to www.representativedemocracy.org. Well, I'm back. I'm Chris Roberts. I'm here with Linda Rubin. We're talking about 2020. Now we're going to discuss what a lot of people don't, they know about, but they really don't want to talk about obesity. One of the polls that came out was very few people in the United States really think they're obese even less morbid obese. Some will say, yeah, I'm a few pounds overweight, but they don't want to talk about it. <clears throat> and here's the Boston Globe. Massachusetts all of a sudden get really alarmed when they found that over 35% of their kids in elementary school were overweight or obese. And if, I guess how you put it bluntly, little kids, obese little kids grow up to be obese adults. You've got to find a way to, to break it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if there weren't all of those uh, those uh, health risk factors associated with being overweight and obese, then it wouldn't be an issue, right? It would just be an aesthetic thing, you know? Do you like thin people or, you know, uh, uh, more zuftic people as they were, they can be called? But, um, 
but there are health issues associated with it. And, you know, the CDC is predicting that with the rates we're seeing now with overweight and obese uh, kids, that one in two kids today are going to develop type 2 diabetes. 50% of the kids today are going to end up with type 2 diabetes and all of the resulting complications that can come with uh, diabetes. Blindness, that's, amputation. Is, yeah, I mean, it's, it's you know, that's, that's just um, unacceptable. Uh, and I, I think you're right that people, you know, they, they, I think a lot of it is people don't know. You know, when you, when you go out and you see everybody starting to sort of look <laughs> you know, uh, a little, a little fuller, um, you know, you, you start to accept, well, that's just, it's not bad. That's just where we're going, right? That's not a bad thing, you know? Um, but people do need to be educated about what does it mean to be overweight and what additional risk factors are you bringing into your lives by, you know, carrying around that extra weight for, for so many years. Um, so I'm, you know, incredibly alarmed by that one in uh, one and two um, piece of data. Uh, I think that's quite disturbing. And the CDC also has said that by 2025, that chronic diseases will affect half the population. So your cardiovascular uh, diseases and um, those kind of things. Um, again, half the population. How are we going to pay for that? Yeah. You know, how are we going to pay for that? And how are people going to deal with a quality of life that's so incredibly compromised um, at age 40, 45, 50? You know, if you've got to, at age 40, get type 2 diabetes and have to look at the next 40 years of having compromised health, um, where's the quality of life, you know? So obviously we, we got to get to the kids. I mean, we got to get to the parents too, and we've got to we've got to help people to first of all be able to know well what does it mean? What is what constitutes overweight and obese? What what does it what does it mean? How how heavy are you when you're overweight or obese? I don't think people even know that. You know some of the basic things. But if if I'm 360 pound NFL football player. And I only have three percent body fat on my six foot two frame. I'm not overweight, am I? <laughs> Everybody would say no. He's not overweight. He's, yeah. he's a stud. Bingo. Right. But but most of them don't live past fifty five once they up. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because of the complications. Right. Right. Well, we we've um, Vision Twenty Twenty uh, is collaborating with um, SAU Twenty Nine to look at what's called body mass index, yep. BMI rates, uh, amongst the kids in Keene schools. And um, the plans are to bring a presentation uh, to the school board and eventually get it out to the public, too, on what, what are the BMIs um, in Keene and then, you know, the surrounding towns as well. And if there are concerns, what are we going to do about it? Are, are, you know, we've put so much emphasis on academic achievement, and um, and certainly we need to put a lot of emphasis on that. But you know, our kids that are heavier, um, our kids that are overweight and obese, does that compromise their academic achievement at all? I don't. I don't know. You know, I don't know the answer to that question. But it's something that we'll be looking at as we continue that collaboration. It could have a a negative effect on their psyche Absolutely. could result in additional bullying. Absolutely. And we've seen self esteem issues. Yeah. Bullying can cause kids to commit suicide. Absolutely. The rate's going up. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's a really important step, um, I think, to take is, is to look at well, what is the situation? You know, what are the, what's the percentage of kids um, in, in keen schools that are overweight? And obese, and um, how does how does the rates here compare to the rest of the uh, state or the rest of the the country? If we're in line, we still will probably want to be concerned because we know when we look at um, obesity rates, for example, um, I think now we're at about thirty seven percent nationwide, yes, something like that. But if you go back to nineteen sixty, I believe it was was the earliest stat I could. Uh, yeah, nineteen sixty. Our obesity rate, rate was 13%. Um, so, you know, in, in 50 years, uh, we've really, you know, tripled almost uh, the, the obesity rate. So the rate in and of itself is probably going to be of concern. 
um, in addition to the fact that we've just been increasing over time um, as well. So, you know, stay tuned for, you know, to see what, what the state of the situation is with our kids here. Because the recent one from the United States Department of Health and Human Services, it said adults over 20, 33.8% <clears throat> of all adults are obese. Over, over 20, extremely obese, BMI over 40, almost 6% of all um, adults are morbid or obese. And um, <clears throat> of adults 20 or older, only 31% of adults in the United States are at a healthy weight. Right. Yeah, 33% in Cheshire County. Yeah. We got a lot of work to do, we Chris. <laughs> we got a lot of work <clears throat> to do. But again, I think the more emphasis um, we put, and by we, I mean the collective we, right. you know, not the, the direct, the people directly involved with Vision 2020, but all the folks out there working on health issues. The more emphasis we can put on making healthy lifestyle behaviors the easy choice, um, the more affordable choice, the safer choice, the more fun choice, that's where we're going to get the big gains. Um, because we're we're all human and we can't make radical change you know we're not good at that right right and we were talking about do you know the health risk of being overweight type 2 diabetes coronary heart disease and stroke metabolic syndrome cancers sleep acne gallbladder disease fat liver disease pregnancy complications <clears throat> people always say well if you're if you're pregnant and you're big, that's good for the baby. I guess it isn't very good for the baby. Not, yeah, not to be really <clears throat> overweight. Yeah, I mean, you know, OBGYNs give you a range, right, of weight that is, is decent to, to gain. And if you get outside that range, no, you can uh, set yourself up for more complications. And, um, yeah, yeah, so. Yeah, this will probably tick off my, my daughter, my youngest daughter. She got pregnant. She's small, only about five foot, put on weight, and then got diabetes during pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And then a grandson was over 10 pounds. Mm -hmm. Some serious comp people didn't pay attention to that. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. the doc doctors did a really good job and kept it. But she wasn't thinking about it. Hey, she, she, mm -hmm. Oh, no, a little bit of weight ain't going to hurt a little bit. Hurt. But that's happening more and more, mm -hmm. causing serious complications, additional expenses. So now, a regular pregnancy is now at a high risk pregnancy, and that's money that we could have better spent on health care other places. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and as we look at you know health insurance costs, um, you know they're already skyrocketing, and we haven't even <coughs> really reached that epidemic proportions in terms of the, um, the the treating the diseases that are a direct result of poor nutrition and physical inactivity. So I think you know if we don't start turning things around. Um, it's going to, you know, health insurance costs are even going to get, even with health care reform, it's still going to, um, it's still going to use up a lot more of our taxpayer dollars than we're going to want to spend on it. Um, and I think what people are not really talking about, we're talking about Social Security and we've got the baby boomers. But when I go through this risk, when people get diabetes and they get these, they get on Social Security disability. And if they're 40, 45 years old, instead of paying into Social Security for 20 years, they're subtracting from Social Security. So being obese and the related health costs and conditions could be a much negative, much greater ef negative effect on um, Social Security's financial stability than baby boons. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And really the whole gross national product too, you know, and, and productivity in this country. The more pr people that are out of the workforce, because of health issues, you know, um, the less productive we're going to be. You know, our, our, we need all of our workers to be working and to be productive. And um, if they can't be because of health issues, um, that's certainly not going to help our economy. <clears throat> and I, I, but how do you, how do you get around with, without people saying, well? It's my life. It's my choices. I can do what I want. Yeah, I think I think that's that's a really great question, Chris. And again, I guess I would just keep harping back on the 
making it making healthy lifestyle behaviors the easy behaviors um, the less expensive behavior everybody cares about costs now you know gas prices went through the roof you mm -hmm. know a while back well you can hop on your bike and save that that gas mile gas money and get the physical um, activity in you can have more quality time with your kids doing those errands around town, you know, walking to the grocery store for a few things or, you know, whatever, whatever the errand is. Um, so I think, it, you know, we're really talking about culture shift here. We're talking about changing the way we do things. It's not going to happen overnight, but I'm, I'm very hopeful that it, it can happen and that, that it will happen. Um, you know, I think the Health Care Reform Act, um, and I know there's lots of, you know, controversy around, <coughs> around that, but from, you know, my perspective, um, and, and this is certainly my opinion, um, you know, increasing coverage to the most vulnerable populations, I can't argue against mm -hmm. that. Um, there's a task force that's put been put together, I forget the official name of the president's, you know, health care reform commission, something like that, that's putting together a, a, a plan based on um, a prevention plan on um, encouraging healthy lifestyle behaviors. And $15 billion is being committed to um, address poor nutrition and physical activity uh, in, through initiatives across the country. And um, that's very hopeful to me that people are, are that our government is saying, um, you know, not necessarily that we don't need the money for clinical mm -hmm. issues, you know, but the, that statistic I talked about a while back where only 10% of the factors that affect our health are related to medical care, but we spend 88% 80, of our dollars on that. If we could start shifting that a little bit, which the Health Care yep. Reform Act is going to do, and put more into the healthy lifestyle behaviors, which those that accounts for about 50% of the control that we can have, um, I think that we can really start start making a difference. And, you know, what are we going to spend that money on? Well, hopefully it's going to get passed down through pro programs like the Safe Routes to Schools program to give communities um, the funding they need to change the built environment, mm -hmm. as we talked yeah. at the city council meeting about. So putting in uh, bike paths, walking uh, trails, uh, sidewalks, um, things that are going to make it easier for people to do the biking and the walking, um, you know, bike racks, uh, covered bus stops, um, improving public transportation. We know in this community we've got a lot of room to grow with pub public okay. transportation, but what are the issues associated with it now? Is it as convenient as it could be? Um, if there were covered bus stops, would it make it a little more convenient for people? Would people would start using it more? And then you start to see that culture change uh, happening. So that's where I think that $15 billion will start going into is initiatives around built environment, education and awareness around, around healthy lifestyle behaviors. Who knows that, you know, the CDC has been harping for a long time, 150 minutes of physical activity a week for adults. Where do you learn that? Who, t who tells you that? You know, where do people even get that information to know, well, what am I supposed to be doing? You know, um, who knows that kids are, the recommended amount for kids is 300 minutes a week. Where are you getting that information from? So we've got to get some of that information out to people because I really do believe that the majority of people have no idea where they're supposed to be. They don't know about BMI. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't know that over, a, what is it, a 40 BMI is... A morbid is obese, yeah. Morbid <laughs> obese. Um, they, they don't know that. You know, well, a BMI measurement is a pretty simple measurement. Yep. You can go online and plug in a couple of numbers, your, your weight and height, yep. you can get your BMI yep. level. But people don't even, they've never even heard of BMI. They don't even know what it is or what it, what it means, you know. And, and the people, I don't think they really understand the, um, <clears throat> some of the costs that go in to it. A fire department, a paramedics, we have to buy a heck of a lot more expensive equipment where it used to be, well, 250 pounds, bingo, that covered. Now you haven't put fire department to 350, 400 pound, um, what do you call them, uh, stretchers. 
I've been reading more and more that the hospitals and operating rooms have to buy a heck of a lot more heavy-duty equipment to, for some of the people because they've had collapse during um, insurgency. But those costs are all coming back. Absolutely. They're, they're all coming back. Mm -hmm. And that's probably not even part of the $40 billion <laughs> that I already talked about that we're paying, <clears throat> yeah, in medical uh, costs. Uh, so, yeah, it's only going to get worse if we don't start to reverse that trend a little bit. And, uh, of course, I mean, I've been an um, educator for, for many, many years. I started my career mm -hmm. as a high school teacher down in Florida. And, um, you know, if we're really going to create culture change, I think we have to start with with the kids. I mean, certainly we're we're not going to ignore adults, you know, but if we can get to the kids when the behaviors are being formed, you know, and get those messages out to them about five fruits and vegetables a day, 300 minutes of physical activity um, a week, and what that what that means, you know, what that what that would look like. If we can get more physical activity. Um, worked into their regular day, you know, through school. I mean, there's certainly been a trend over the last probably 20 years, less and less time for, for gym, uh, for physical activity, for recess, you know, because all this emphasis was going on the academics. And um, the academics are incredibly mm -hmm. important, but there's a lot of research that shows that when kids mm -hmm. are, are physically fit, um, they're, they're doing better in school. Um, so, I mean, I know my son is a, uh, in eighth grade at Keene Middle School, and they've got the state testing starting, I think it's tomorrow. <laughs> and they've started, I think it was last year, they started taking the kids out for some physical activity before the test yeah. because they've just, it's just been proven the kids have better attention span. They do better on the tests if they do some physical activity and have a healthy snack before they sit down for the two hours to take the test. I guess our grandparents went very dumb when it says, go outside and clear your mind. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, no, I, you know, I think they did have it right um, uh, way back in terms of the physical activity part, for sure. You know, uh, like I said, I walked and biked everywhere mm. as a kid. Everybody played outside. Uh, we played chase games. We, we built forts in the woods. We, you know, did all that outside play. You, you see less and less of that, right? Screens have replaced what we do after school, you know. His, we'll bring up two controversial ones. Okay. Okay. We say we, it's not supposed to happen, but we all know, know it happens. There are people go apply for jobs, and now you're getting people, you, you may be obese, uh, overweight in high school, you're overweight in college, no one has said anything. Now all of a sudden, it's a really competitive workforce out there. I'm the boss, I see two people, one is overweight, one isn't. Psychologically, we're saying, well, you know, that overweight person may cause my medical costs to go up. They may not work as hard as this Eva, this Eva Bega looking person could be lazy, but now you have perceptions. So someone who's well qualified may have the wrong, if you put in advertise the wrong package that isn't going to get hired. They would never get the opportunity to show their, their skills. And so, again, it, it's having some consequences that kids never thought about. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I can't really personally, you yeah. know, speak to that. And, of course, there's, you know, there's... Um, anti-discrimination laws that's, on the books, and that's not supposed yeah, think, to be what yeah, people... Yeah, I think Michigan is the only one that has uh, anti-discrimination against being overweight. Mm -hmm. The other 49 states say it's the boss's prerogative. Right, and right. The, any good boss is going to get the individual that's going to make them the most money. It should not be biased at any... <clears throat> but some of those, those factors, if people like to gravitate towards people that look healthy. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, and, and employers, you know they would look at insurance costs, or they are looking at their insurance costs going up and up and up. And, um, I mean, I would hope that, you know, still people wouldn't do that. But I'm sure <clears throat> it's happening. It, more and more, the re it's, it, it is happening. We don't want to say it's happening, but, it, but it's, it, especially if I'm a small business and I only have 20 people, I only take one or two outliers that would really changed my whole um, fee structure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that's, <clears throat> that's another effect of being overweight. Um, 
the other one that the United States Army just put one out concerning national security. They can't get <clears throat> enough young men and women in to the service because it's, so many are overweight. And now getting out of, they had to change boot camp because they're overweight. They were getting stress fractures and other ones. And now they get a year after boot camp to be able to pass the physical fitness test. Mm -hmm. That used to never was the problem before. You had, like I said, the kids on the farms running and all over the place. But those are having some serious effects on, on a lot of people. Yeah. So really, prevention is, is the answer, you know, um, because it, it, when you're 50, 60 pounds overweight, that is incredibly daunting. You know, I, I just can't even imagine, you know, um, how, you know, where do you start, you know, when, when, when. One step at a time. Yeah, one step at a time. Right. But it's still, it still. can be incredibly overwhelming, you know. So preventing folks from getting there in the first place is I believe yeah. um, the key to to our future of, of just being healthier. Um, if, if I'm a man or a woman, 50, 60 pounds overweight, why do I want to go to some drill with some DI drill instructor yelling at me? There's no connection there. It's like, I want to go home as quick as possible. Right, yeah. And um, <clears throat> so I've done a lot of talking. You got some other things that you want to hit on before we... Um. Well, an uh, initiative that, that um, has been getting out into the schools over the last uh, couple of years, which I think is a direction that we'll be going in to um, really work with school kids, is the 5210 message. And um, that message is five fruits and vegetables a day, uh, 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 two – oh, gosh, am I forgetting exactly <laughs> how it works? I know the zero is zero sugary yeah. drinks. Uh, one hour of physical activity a day and uh, two less than two hours of screen time yeah. a day. There you go. <laughs> Phew! Um, so that message, um, it's simple, right? Everybody should be able to remember it. Uh, so we're getting that message out, you know, to the kids, something simple that they can remember, and teachers are incorporating it into their, their mm -hmm. curriculum. And so whether you're a kindergartner or a sixth grader, if you're hearing... 5210, 5210, and you understand what it means. Um, I think it's a really great message that is, is easy and um, that kids can start to, to internalize and also bring the information home to parents. So um, that's an initiative that uh, Cheshire Medical Center's Community Health Department has been working with the school district to uh, get out there to folks. And um, We'll, we'll see how that message, you know, takes um, as, as time goes on. I, I think it's taking because if you go Andy Bohannon over at the Keene Rec Center, you, you go there, they got that catch program, 60 minutes a day. Mm -hmm. They move upstairs so the kids go and they're handing out flyers. Don't take the elevator, please walk. Um, <clears throat> my, two of my grandsons go there and it says, Papa, no junk food because they have a list. I, I want to get my sticker on there because I'm going to get... And so the kids get it. The kids, the kids adapt, get it. The kids get, get it. And, and let's face it, it's a lot <clears throat> easier for kids to... Um, you know, they don't have formed behaviors yet, so it's easier, easy for them to take a message and go, oh, okay, no sugary drinks? Oh, yeah, I get that. Whereas, you know, an adult who's been drinking, you know, a, a six-pack of Coke every day for you know, 25 years, it's going to be really hard to get them to give up that Coke, you know. Mm -hmm. So let's, you know, work with the, the kids so that they understand what the healthy behaviors are. They can just make it part of their, their habits growing up. And hopefully, you know, we, we can avoid some of these doomsday, you know, statistics um, about the diabetes and um, the shorter lifespans. Um, it's nothing you really want to talk to to kids about, you know. Uh, but that's that's the reality if we continue on this tra trajectory of uh, overweight and obesity rates. The um, the Keene School District and SAU 29, <clears throat> with their wellness program, they're pushing this thing, choices and responsibility. You've got to make the choices. You have to be responsible for your choices. You have a captive audience in the SAU but the article that was in the Keene Sentinel this weekend was about the, all the alcohol that was being consumed at the college. 
how is 2020 working with the college? Because for the first time, a lot of these kids are away from the parents and isn't someone that knock on the door and say, are you making the right choice? Yeah. Well, Keene State College has been a tremendous partner uh, in the Vision 2020 <coughs> initiative. Um, they are a member of the Council for a Healthier Community. And uh, there's a number of individuals uh, from Keene State that are either participating on action planning groups um, for Vision 2020 or are getting their uh, uh, students involved in our Champions program. There is one program of Vision 2020 right now called Champions. Um, and basically, it's, a, it's a, sort of a social networking or kind of like, kind of like a club to belong to. Uh, so we want to recruit folks to be champions for Vision 2020, to live, share, model, and inspire healthy lifestyle behaviors in their own lives, and then share what they're doing with, with uh, people in their families, their friends, um, neighbors, coworkers. And uh, so we've got, you know, professors at Keene State and people working in administration over there um, recruiting champions for us, um, uh, figuring out what they're going to do personally in their own lives, but then what they're going to share on campus with students. And, and certainly alcohol consumption is, is one of the big areas of concern on any college campus, you know, across the country. And if you look at the leading causes of death, alcohol consumption is, is fourth. So tobacco number one, <laughs> poor physical activity and, uh, and nutrition is number two and three. And then number four is alcohol consumption. So um, that, that, is a, that, is a, that is a biggie. Um, but again, fortunately, in this community, we have a number of prevention coalitions, the Monadnock Alcohol and Drug Abuse Coalition, mm. um, Monadnock Voices for Prevention mm. Coalition. Uh, they just collaborated to do the uh, medication take back yeah. at the police department, and they had, that was an overwhelmingly yeah. successful um, event. And there's a, there's a number of folks from uh, Keene State that are participating on both of those coalitions. And, you know, colleges, they, they know, it, they know mm. it, it's an issue. And... Um, uh, Keene State, I mean, my son went to UNH, and, you know, I know there's online mm. tutorials about alcohol consumption. Mm. Um, there's information about uh, what the, the legal consequences are. And so there's, there's a lot more um, emphasis. But it is a big problem and all the more reason why we really need to work together and um, uh, collaborate on these issues. Because if we look at it as a Keene State College issue, you know, it's, it's just, Keene State College is part of our community, so we really need to, to work together. And they're, they're open to that and, like I said, great partners of Vision 2020. The, um, we've got a few more minutes. We've covered a lot. But you've been, I have to admit, you have, you've been quite modest <laughs> because you haven't talked about the doctors and other providers from the Cheshire Medical that work in the community. You have a doctor that's working down at the Keene um, Senior Center. You had a doctor that worked with the athletes for the um, concussion and head injury. Could you explain some? Of, I'm not really good at names. That's probably my head injury. I can't remember names really good. But the, um, explain how they're becoming part of the community. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, I think, you know, the folks at, at Cheshire Med Medical, the leadership mm -hmm. and, and um, uh, many of the departments there, you know, they are all so passionate about, improving health um, and really feel in, in the core of their beings that um, we need to work on help empowering people to take responsibility uh, for, for their own health. That that's just become a driving mission at, at Cheshire Medical Center. And um, they're working with, uh, Cheshire Med is one of five community uh, health centers in the state that's working on something called accountable care um, which right now, the way that um, hospitals get reimbursed for services, you, you come in, you're sick, um, we perform right. a bunch of tests on you and bill insurance and get reimbursed, right? Um, well, what if insurance companies reimbursed hospitals for keeping people well? well? That's what accountable care is all about. Well, like I said, Cheshire Med is one of five um, hospitals in the state working with insurance companies to, to figure out um, how could we do business differently so that we were rewarded as a hospital to keep people healthy. 
we still want to have the services available yeah. when people, you know, and nobody, we're not going to get rid of yeah. any of those things. But if the, if the reimbursement structure could be shifted so that there was even more incentive for hospitals to keep people healthy, you'd see even more, well, you know, not just coming from Cheshire Medical Center, but from hospitals all over the state, all over the country in the prevention, you know, community health um, arena. But right now, hospitals get paid to treat sick people, period. There's money in cutting, no money in prevention. Exactly. But we're going to see a change in that. Like I said, the Health Care Reform Act, uh, $15 billion uh, towards uh, prevention um, initiatives. There's a whole... Um, piece of the Health Care Reform Act dedicated to employee wellness and working with employers to improve wellness through through the companies. Um, so I think we're going to, you know, we're already we're seeing change in, in this community. And um, it's, it's a bandwagon that people are jumping on for all different kinds of reasons, uh, you know, but also because it's, it's the right thing to do. I want to thank you. I'll went by really quick. Hopefully you'll come back again and we can do some more on this one? Absolutely. So I'm Chris Roberts, and I'll see you on the long road. Thank you. Refreshments provided by G. Housen Distributors. Premium beverages delivered.